Exploring the creative role of storyboarding within the directorial process. Storyboards are an essential part of the filmmaking process. They have a bridge between script and screen. A director uses the storyboard to visualise the composition, movement and pacing of their filmic vision. A storyboard also breaks down the script into the actions and dialogue for each shot. A storyboard is most useful in conveying the director's vision to all members of the production crew. For the cinematographer, set designer, gaffer and editor, amongst many others, it is the only frame of reference for what the final cut of the film will actually look like. Production managers and first ADs also need them for the shot list and shooting schedule. Some directors outsource the role to a storyboard artist, working with them closely. Alfred Hitchcock worked with various artists throughout his six-decade career, most notably graphic designer Saul Bass. Hitchcock placed great value in the storyboarding process. In an interview with North by North by screenwriter, Ernest Lehman said, Hitch says it's a bore for him to get the picture on the screen because it has all been done already in his office. Hitchcock believed in having every moment, before the camera started rolling, meticulously planned out and visualised via storyboarding. For the 1960 horror psycho, Hitchcock worked with Bass on the storyboards, even going to the extent of making him director on the iconic shower scene because the artist had spent so long drafting the shots and knew the scene so well. Through these intricate and detailed storyboards, Hitchcock would arrive on set with the films already finished in his head. While this proved useful for production and made every film a finalised art piece, some directors believe this reliance on a storyboard lacks creativity and does not allow for creative exploration in the moment. One such director was Werner Herzog, who said, Storyboards are the instruments of cowards. Directors differ in their approach to the question how much planning is necessary. Martin Scorsese enters production without a finished script, believing a story will reveal itself through filming. He does, however, have meticulous storyboards for the entire screenplay, becoming more detailed around the key scenes. Scorsese believes in a visual literacy that all artists and filmmakers should acquire, a language he has developed since the age of 11, when he drew his first storyboard. While a script may not yet be finished, Scorsese places faith in his visual literacy to know where to put the camera if a story goes in a different direction while filming. When Paul Schrader, screenwriter for the iconic film Taxi Driver, showed Scorsese the script, they prompted instant reactions in the director. Scorsese used these pencil drawings to communicate brief but evocative responses to the script. Sometimes they were elaborate, but more often they were stick figure drawings to convey the imagery in his mind at speed. Other directors create their own storyboards to capture directly the image they have in their mind. Ridley Scott brought his background as a creative designer into his distinctive storyboards known as Ridleygrams. These take the form of quick thumbnails, capturing pivotal moments to convey the look, feel and vision for the film. Although Alien was only Scott's second feature film, his Ridley Grams managed to communicate his unique vision to funders so well that they doubled their investment. The distinct look of the film was translated so successfully from the storyboard to the final film that Scott, artist H.R. Geiger and the special effects team won two Academy Awards for visual design. This clarity of stylistic vision has remained a key creative approach in Scott's work. Wes Anderson is known for his stunning symmetrical cinematography, but he is also equally concerned with the comedic pacing of his scripts as well. To properly visualise this before production, Anderson goes one step further by creating an animatic. An animatic is an animated storyboard that provides the director with movement, pacing, and often will have the recording of the voice lines playing over the top. This allows a writer to revisit the script if something plays out better on paper than it does on screen. This has clearly helped Anderson to develop unique character studies and a visual style. It should be recognised that this video essay has only represented male directors so far. During research I noticed a profound lack of examples of storyboards from female directors and of evidence showing how they work with them. I can only hypothesise that this lack of documentation of female directors' creative process is because they were not considered icons of film history. All the directors mentioned are highly acclaimed, and all of them are iconic household names. Only recently are women receiving the recognition they deserve for their work, and hopefully this means that their creative processes will be better documented in the future. One of these rising icons is director and writer Jane Campion, only the third female to receive a Best Director Oscar. When making Power of the Dog, Campion and DOP Ari Wagner lived in their filming location of New Zealand for a year. Every day they spent five to six hours storyboarding, checking the sightlines in the actual shooting locations. Campion believes in having a strong filmic vision before production begins, but, unlike Hitchcock, acknowledges the need to embrace the moment if something truly incredible happens that could never be planned for.
storyboards are a seldom appreciated part of filmmaking history. Production illustrator Maurice Superano has described storyboards as the diary of the film. As a private record of a visualisation process, they were rarely shared. In contrast to the common ideology that the auteur is the sole visionary, the storyboard is evidence that the film is a collective endeavour. Film discourse is increasingly recognising the crucial role that storyboards play as mechanisms to share the creative process beyond the director.